Coach, we haven't talked to you since the basketball reunion mm -hmm. uh, in August. Can, can you walk us through the, the emotions of, of that weekend? Oh, wow. Uh, it's so crazy because it hadn't been that long ago, but it seems like it was a long time ago. I love getting uh, the former players back and having some structure in what we're doing. Uh, I loved being at the golf course, hitting a tee shot for everybody that came through. Um, that way I got to see everybody that was on the course. Um, seeing the pickup games on Saturday morning was fun. Seeing Joe Wolf go in there and try to say he was going to go up and down the court two or three more times, but I think he actually went five or six. Uh, that was fun. Uh, uh, Friday night deal was, uh, it's hard for me to even talk about it, uh, the court thing, because it's, it's very flattering. Uh, uh, almost lost it when the little boys pulled back the cover off of it. And just to see them involved was something that I loved. But uh, I really enjoyed uh, the entire weekend and having the kids and grandkids over at uh, uh, Keenan and then playing in the jump pit and everything else. Uh, it was just a fantastic weekend and uh, one that I'll remember for a long, long time and have my family here and particularly the little boys was, uh, was pretty nice. Going back a little farther, how much did being a high school coach influence your coaching in college? I would think a great deal. I think every year, uh, you know, I've learned some things, uh, thrown some things away, decided to add some things. But uh, getting my high school team uh, to be willing to pay the price to work in the off season, because uh, when I went to one high school, it wasn't uh, a great basketball school. Principal told me, said, uh, we've gone six straight years lit, winning less than six games. And I said, well, I'll change that. So I did. I stretched it to seven. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, but getting the kids all the way down in the elementary schools to come in and being involved in our Saturday morning uh, youth clinics uh, every year. I remember a bunch of kids that I had as uh, uh, fourth graders. Uh, the very first year when they were seniors at Owen, they played for the state championship. So that part uh, was something that I still do today, is that uh, trying to get kids to be willing to pay the price in the off season, and you want know, to beat people sweat more. And I've lived by that philosophy really my whole life, and I think that started with high school coaching. What's been the toughest part of the adjustment, you know, going into the season without Joel Berry and the offense there for him? You know, you make those adjustments every year. Uh, you know, I'm – no question, I liked having Joel and Theo out there and the experience they had and the toughness that Joel had and the way that Theo put every moment, uh, made it fun. Uh, but that team is gone, so I don't sit back. Uh, you know, I missed Marcus and Bryce, and when I say that, I never thought after the first couple of years I'd ever say I'm going to miss Bryce, but I missed him immensely. But uh, I think with each uh, and every team, it's a new team, and you go from there. It's uh, and it doesn't do you any good to think about so and so. I pull on those uh, experiences to, to help the team and to talk to the team about them. But uh, uh, you know, now I'm just wanting Joel and Theo to make it, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll win a couple of games too. Can you see the value of the Bahamas trip now, or is that something that maybe shows up later? I think it's both. I think we've already seen some of it, but I think it really will continue to show up too. Uh, Competition wasn't quite the level we had hoped it was going to be, and we've been there before and had some good competition. Uh, but I think that was the only missing thing. But we did it more to get our team together and travel together and uh, uh, try to start building team chemistry just as much as we did for the X's nose on the court. And uh, uh, so I think we'll continue to see that. Coach, what stands about stands out about this current group? Uh, you know, we've only had six or seven full practices, so it's hard to say yet. Uh, uh, you know, in the, deep in the back of your mind, you got three seniors uh, who played a lot of basketball, averaging double figures. You asked them to play in big moments, uh, and so they know what that is. Uh, you got three freshmen uh, who are very gifted, who are uh, give you the new enthusiasm that I always talk about. Uh, and the guys in between, uh, you know, you hope they've gotten better. Uh, we sat down in the spring and talked to every player individually about what we wanted to work on. And I told them after 15 to 20 practices this fall, I'd sit down and tell them where I thought they'd really worked on it. So it's, uh, uh, it's a good mix. Uh, you know, I'd like for somebody to step forward in a couple of areas more so than we have so far. But, you know, like I say, we've only had 
maybe, I don't even remember, six or seven practices so far since we got back. What have you liked so far from the freshmen? What have I liked? What have you liked so far from what the freshmen have done in those practices? Uh, first thing you love is their talent. I mean, they're gifted. There's no question about that. I think playing in Nassau sauce uh, uh, gave us an opportunity to see them in game action that a lot of times you don't have. But again, that was uh, uh, the competition wasn't very good. And uh, you don't beat people by 85 unless it's a team of me and four of you guys. They could beat by 85, uh, but uh, or 80, whatever it was. Uh, but their talent, uh, their work ethic, their uh, mental preparation, they did a great job in the uh, uh, summer school got very very good grades, so I don't worry about that. I mean, they've really uh, put me at ease, and uh, and I know that they're going to step up and be able to play for us. So it's there's no negatives uh, whatsoever. But uh, you know, Nasir got a tremendous amount of publicity, and he's tremendously athletic and wants to be really good. Kobe got a little less publicity, but is really gifted and plays really hard. Pushes a ball at a pace that I like it to be pushed at. Uh, Leakey is, is maybe as versatile after six or seven practices as anybody I've ever had, but he's gifted also. I mean, so I like all of them. Roy, how much did you have to manage Cameron Johnson with a hip last year in <coughs> practice or limiting overuse or anything like that? Uh, not as much during the year. I mean, we were always aware of it and perhaps subbed him more or gave him a few more days here and there, but I think. Uh, after the surgery, and, uh, I mean, because we went as slow as you could possibly go this summer. I mean, he was mad at everybody because he wanted to get out there and be able to play earlier. So I think Doug and uh, the doctors really did a great job, and he looks like he's moving more freely. Uh, looks like he doesn't have as much pain, doesn't look as stiff. Uh, so I think it's really been helpful, but I think we went really, really slow on him uh, after the season, much more so than during the season. You mentioned the areas where you were still looking for people to step up, step forward. Which what areas are those that are of, of concern to you? Uh, I'd like somebody to definitely establish that uh, they're the big guy that's going to get the most time on the floor. You know, it's been harder. Huff hadn't practiced yet. Uh, uh, he's getting him into half court stuff, I guess, this week, but he hadn't gone up and down at all, so that's hurt him. Sterling and Garrison Walker have all had their moments, but. Uh, I'd really like somebody to step up and say I'm the best and, and show it every day. Uh, to point guard, uh, a seventh has been there. And uh, first game in uh, Nassau played well. Second game he didn't play. Kobe was outstanding. Uh, but we've given Leakey some opportunities there as well. And uh, But even there, I'd still say the same thing. I like it if one guy uh, really steps up and says, you got to play me more than you play anybody else. The big guys, is there a sense of deja vu there. I feel like this is a conversation we've had before about wanting one of those yeah. group to step up. Yeah, and, and very similar. You know, I'm still I'm stubborn. I want to try to play two bigs, but uh, if that's not what's best, then you know we've done it. I guess if I did it again this year, this would be the third time. I guess P.J. Harrison was our four man at some point, and Luke was a five man last year, and Theo and Cam and those guys played four. But uh, so if we had to do it, I would still do it, but I'd feel more comfortable. The other way. How are Garrison and Sterling notably different than last year? Not as much as I would like for them to be, <laughs> you know. But uh, uh, they've made the Sterling's made the running test that we've given the team so far. Uh, neither one of the big guys, neither I guess it means just one or two. None of the big guys. Uh, is that correct, Barry? Am I using that properly? Either way, okay. Uh, neither could be four. Because we got four big guys, neither of those four then have uh, uh, stepped forward, but all of them have gotten a little better, uh, but not at the level that I wanted them to get better yet. Coach, can you talk about what Kenny Williams has meant to this program and what you expect of him this year? Well, I hope it's really a breakout season for everybody else. I thought it was a breakout season for me the way he played last year, you know, because he was so uh, consistent defensively and had games where he really shot the ball in other games. He didn't do it as much. and. I wanted him to be a not a first half player, not a second half scorer. I wanted him to be able to score in both halves. And, uh, but I thought he really had a good year for us, and uh, he's been one of the really good leaders uh, so far in the preseason. And uh, uh, he's our best perimeter defender, and I think he's even better this year than he was last year. I've been using him as an example for the other guys. 
but he's been shooting the ball in the hole as well too. He and he and Cam have shot it better than anybody else so far. But uh, uh, he's a fun guy to be around, and you really just hope that uh, uh, things break well for him because he is such a great kid. You mentioned Sterling passed the running test. Can you kind of break down like how that happened, what went into it? Because that was kind of a big deal last year with him. Well, see, every year, no, I shouldn't say it like that. Last time we went to uh, Nassau, and then also that team had done a great job academically in summer school. And so this year we went to Nassau. We had those games. We got back the night before classes started. And the kids had done a great job in summer school academically with their grades. So we didn't do the 12 minute run four years ago. We didn't do it this year. Um, I keep threatening him, but I'm going to take you back out there and make him do it anyway. But uh, so it's been a little easier. But he passed the 33 test, he passed the mile run test. and. Uh, um, we have three things that we normally do, but this year we just do, did did two of them just exactly like we did four years ago when we went to Nassau. What have you seen from Seventh Woods uh, following you know so many injury plagues sophomore season? Yeah, really, he's been injured ever since his senior year in high school. He was injured most of the year, his senior year, and didn't play in any of the things after his senior year because he was hurt. But uh, uh, he's doing a much better job of pushing the pace, much better job of taking the ball to the basket and. Just boils down. It's I'm, I'm pretty easy on point guards. Don't turn the sucker over and stay in front of the ball. And if you do those, I can work with you about anyway. And so that's what uh, he's got to focus on. Having been through a summer after the FBI investigation, did you notice any changes in recruiting, or is it just the same as always? You know, it's it's a massive thing that's still going on, and I'm just dumbfounded. And I had somebody criticize me to say he shouldn't have been dumbfounded. Well, excuse me, I have a right to have my own feelings. Uh, that world that they're explaining out there, that world that's on national news, I am not familiar with, period. And 30 years as a head coach, I've never had anybody ask me for money. I've never asked any shoe company to recruit for me. I've never asked anybody other than the family uh, what's most important to you. So that world that uh, uh, people are acting like it goes on all the time, it does not go on. All. That is a world that I am not familiar with. It's like uh, uh, Jack Nicholas saying that Tiger Woods playing a game that no, he's not familiar with, okay? I'm not familiar with that world. Uh, I'm serious, guys. Never had one person ask me for anything in 30 years. Not one. And never ask a shoe company to do anything for me. Don't particularly like agents, and yet we, they're involved in this whole deal, and then we have a very intelligent group of people that give agents more access. So there's a lot of confusion going on in my brain right now, but that's a, that's a sad state of affairs for people to think that that's all that goes on in college athletics, because that's not all that goes on in college athletics. There's a tremendous majority of people that do it the right way and a tremendous majority of kids and families that want it done the right way. So uh, not compared to what we have done, we had to go deal with over the years, but uh, this has just been very sad for me to see what's – because people, some people think that goes – I mean, I listen to people on TV and the talk shows and everything else said, yeah, this that doesn't mean it goes on everywhere. And it does not. And uh, I'm not familiar with that world. Do you, do you, think, do you been, feel like – do you think you've been sh maybe shielded a bit to that stuff by being at Kansas and now UNC, the blue blood schools that maybe – you know, don't need to go to that. One high school wasn't a blue blood school, but I never did anything unethically and immoral for a kid. And every institution has an opportunity to make decisions how they want to do it, regardless of where you are. And uh, that's not because I'm in North Carolina and not because I was at Kansas. It's because that uh, I was trained to do it the right way. I've tried to get my coaches to do it the right way, and I'm not the only one. There's a tremendous majority of people who have not been in that world that I'm hearing described right now. Do you, do you feel like you lost the recruit any time along the way because of shady dealings like that, even though you're not in that world, that, that world kind of I, We make a lot of decisions if we think the situation doesn't look like it's our kind of ball game. Uh, but that could be for millions of reasons. Uh, you know, a guy doesn't want to play defense, wants to shoot it every time, doesn't want to run across the 10-second line. I might stop recruiting him for that. But, but I'm serious. I have 31, you're starting my 31st year. I have never had one person. I've never talked to a shoe company guy, said, would you help us with this? I've never done that. And I'm not the only guy either. There's 
I'm a, I'm a guy that thinks this one's three quarters full. I'm a guy that thinks the glass is half full, and uh, I think college basketball is is much more than half full. We do some great things. I had a person on one of the committees to sit with me at a game this summer in the Peach Jam, and at the end of the game, and it was a great game, five points in one second by the same kid, wins the game. And I asked the person that was sitting with me, I said, now tell me what was wrong with this game. Tell me what was wrong with what you just saw. And he said, absolutely nothing. And you're darn right, there's a lot of great things that go on, have gone on in summer basketball too. Full season in Chapel Hill now under his belt. Uh, how is Cam Johnson sort of maturing as a leader for your team? I think he is, has matured, and I think he is much more of a leader. I think last year he was very cautious about stepping in front of Joel and Theo, and uh, and I think he's very comfortable. I mean, the guys he lives with, uh, Luke and Kenny, and uh, uh, I think that's uh, uh, the three Stooges really do a great job. And how important is that bond, you think, to keeping the other guys in check, too? I think it's important, but at the end of the day, you got to take care of your own self. You got to do your job. Uh, you know, you can have other people emphasize it to you as much as you want, but bottom line is you got to do it yourself. And uh, uh, all three of those guys really are good leaders, but that doesn't mean that they're going to make seventh do something or Kobe do something. They can emphasize to them what's important and use their experience and tell them of uh, experiences that they've had, but. At the end of the day, everybody's got to make their own decisions. You've got, you've got the three titles. You've been in the Hall of Fame for a while. You've got the court now named for you. Is, is the fire in your belly any different now than the fire you would have felt 30 years ago? How did you feel about my statements about the, our game? I mean, seriously, guys, there's a huge majority of coaches I would love to coach my grandsons. So now, come on, don't tell me that just because something happened over there, or over here or everywhere, okay, because it does not happen everywhere. So I'd sort of answer the question like that right there. I still think there's a, quite a bit of fire in the belly. Uh, if you don't believe me, ask the kids how they felt after Saturday morning's practice. I told them the next 48 hours was going to be the greatest 48 hours they'd had because they weren't going to see me for that time period, and they agreed. Uh, I went down to Wrightsville and uh, so a lot of damage to a lot of homes, a lot of people's lives changed. So again, it was, uh, uh, I love what I'm doing. I love trying to get all you guys to move in the same direction and in one team. And that's what I've tried to do my whole life. And it's what I'm trying to do with this team. And uh, they're fun guys to be around. We voted last night on who we thought was going to win between the Yankees and the Red Sox. And half of them sucked up because they chose the Yankees because they know I'm a big Yankees fan. So the penalty today is not going to be quite as much as it would have been if the Red Sox had, <laughs> had lost. But uh, I enjoy my moments with the guys on the court, in the locker room, in practice, in games, and doing different things. Coach, how, um, first of all, how are you and how was your summer? And also a Tiger one. And I want to know, where were you in that moment? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've watched uh, almost every shot he's made, either live on TV or at late night replay. But uh, as I've said before, I really have a, a tremendous amount of respect for the focus that he has. The only other guy I've ever seen that had the skills and focus like that was Michael Jordan. And so I loved watching Tiger. I was surprised. I wanted him to be very successful, uh, but he so far surpassed what I thought he'd be able to come back and do. And that's probably made me uh, uh, even admire him even more. Uh, but, you know, the Ryder Cup sort of put a bad ending on what everybody was so excited about there at the end. Uh, but my summer, it was uh, busy. Had good thing is I had no surgery. Uh, good thing is all those people had taken all of my money on the golf course. I got some of it back. I uh, got my handicap back in single digits, first time in three years. And it had been between a three and an eight for 41 years. And so I had a good summer. And the little, the littlest one was a year old last Sunday, and so I've had a, I've had a good time. Roy, you talk about Swan and nowadays a lot. Is that what we're missing now? The community, the way the community would would just feed into the high schools, and we're losing that. I think. Is there any way to get that back? I don't think so. I think that horse has left the barn. You know, when I was in school, and even when I was coaching, the private schools, most of them couldn't compete with the public schools, and now it's the other way around. And uh, some of the best uh, high school kids are getting together to 
play on the same you know private school teams and it's something that we see uh, at the NBA level as well but uh, uh, you know a lot of our guys um, I mean we back a couple of years ago we had uh, uh, B Rob and uh, seventh and uh, uh, Tony Bradley and they all played in their community school for their entire lives and but you don't see that each and every year it gets to be more and more that kids go somewhere to play but uh, some of the reasons are fantastic reasons too and I think you got to look at it individually but I do believe that uh, uh, that'll continue happening but uh, some kids go just to want to have more focus more competition every day to reach their own dreams NBA is going to get involved at some point in this grassroots part of it. Do you have confidence that they'll figure it out? Or? You can't figure it out. I don't care how smart you think you are. You ain't going to figure it out. At NCAA, you heard me last year, started in 1906 because people were cheating college football. President Roosevelt said we've got to have a governing body. 1906 to right now is a long time. we still got problems. You can't legislate morality. You can't legislate honesty. And uh, you got to try to do the best you can. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, there are some changes that are already being made uh, uh, that are good. And there are some changes uh, that are being made that I think are bad. You know, I think uh, change is always not for the good. Change is always change. But sometimes change is worse also. Coach, the amount of players that come back to this school and for you is something that you know you don't really see across the board with many colleges. What is that? What do you think that says about you and this program that players just come back and just love on you? Well, I think you know go back to Coach McGuire and bringing Coach Smith in, and uh, that's the guy that taught me more off the court than he ever did on the court about dealing with people. I'll never be as good as he was, uh, but uh, I'm still benefiting from his uh, idea of what a basketball program should be and I'm very lucky to be benefiting from that and uh, it's uh, uh, it's a neat feeling you know but everybody it's like uh, all of you guys in here we're not going to agree on everything all of my players don't think I'm as good as some of the other players do some of them say great things and other ones nod their head and go on <laughs> you know so I realize that but uh, uh, I think they all uh, I think all of them will understand, too, that uh, uh, what I've been trying to do is the best I could do. But uh, it's it's been a neat summer for things like that, yeah. Coach, you have an opening at point guard. What, what have you seen from the guys vying for that spot? What do you want to see from the guys that are competing for that role? As I said earlier, I think uh, that seventh uh, uh, has gotten better. I think Kobe's coming fast. Uh, uh, but again, guys, Unless you tell me that I'm playing tomorrow for my life, I don't think I have to make a decision today. Uh, so there's going to be quite a bit of time yet. And uh, I remember uh, that's it's not very important, but I cut a guy after the first night of JV practice and let him come back because he said he was sick. So I let him come back and he ended up starting for us. You know, so we don't have to make any decisions now. Coach, what do you expect the identity of this team would be? Or is that something you find out when the season gets going? Yeah, I think the identity comes when you face some adversity once you get started and see how guys pull together, how guys handle the uh, less playing time and how somebody else handles more playing time. I think you get all that later on. Andrews? I believe the opener next month is the earliest opener the program has had. <clears throat> if you reach the title game, I think it's the latest the program will have played again. I'd take that. How, how do you prepare for the, for the grind, how taxing the season is? You know, guys, I was coaching one year in probably 93, 94, 95 season. Practice started November 1st. It's the only year that ever happened because it had always been October 15th. And, and, and all of a sudden we said November 1st. I was happy. We played in the preseason NIT. We were the first team to play. We had like 16 practices, but it was fine. The season's really, really long really long. I mean, our guys are getting nine days off in the month of October. And uh, But I wish we could wait a little longer and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, again, people make decisions or suggestions or rules for the right reason, and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Is there something that you do physically or mentally to prepare for the grind? Because you've got to get Oh, me physically, years. mentally, yeah. I try to keep working all the time because at my age you don't take two months off and then try to say, oh, practice starts tomorrow, let's go run a mile. You know, so uh, I, I try to work out uh, all the time for my body and also so I can eat what I want to eat. I like desserts. 
And so <laughs> I already did yoga for an hour this morning. I walked for 52 minutes at uh, lunch, and half of that is, no, 20% is because it's healthy, but the rest of it's so I can eat what I want to eat. Coach, if you I guys. Last one. Coach, I'm sure you've seen a lot of speculation about this year being a top five pick. Have you guys had that conversation yet, or is that something to come up later? Or uh, that we have not had that conversation. <laughs> okay, it's uh, my job is to win, or I'm going to get fired. And my job one A is to help each player reach their own individual dreams and goals. And I realize it's one and one A, but I don't think we're at that point that uh, right now he's trying to make sure he can make his running times and remember what position he's playing and whether he's got on a white shirt and a blue shirt. So I don't think he's thinking anything else other than that. And before we go to, because I was asked this morning twice, I'm surprised that you guys didn't. Stun, I'm going to say so anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you ask him. Yeah, you know, I'm just telling you, just in case somebody, Chris, what happened is uh, we had two scheduled events. We had an exhibition game with uh, a smaller school in our state, our state that we've done for years. I think many, maybe my first year, we said all of our exhibition games were going to be against teams in our own state so we could give them some money to help their program. And we've, uh, since they gave us the opportunity to split it, we've played uh, a scrimmage, a private scrimmage. And we've done that and had great feelings about the people we were scrimmaging with. And then all of a sudden our state uh, and South Carolina had a terrible a tragedy, a horrific storm come through, whatever you want to call it. And I called uh, Frank to see if uh, he would be interested in playing a game. And we would ask for a, you all right back there, kid? Okay, looked like something was falling apart on your camera there. Uh, but uh, so I called him, said nobody's been hurt as badly as we have in North Carolina and South Carolina with Florence. And we asked for a waiver to see if we could play. I'm not trying to gain advantage on anybody. I don't think we can gain advantage on anybody, uh, but uh, we were willing to play each other. Uh, we wanted to, I wanted to take it to Charlotte because it'd be closer between the two schools and uh, play a game and give all the money to uh, all the money. And I was going to try to convince a guy that I know pretty well that owns the building in Charlotte to give us a great rate and, uh, uh, instead of a bad rate. And I was dumbfounded when the waiver was not granted. And I'm a guy that, you know, I don't think you have to treat everybody alike. I want you to treat everybody fairly. But I was stunned. I'm sad that it didn't go. But, uh, you know, I thought uh, our political scene in the world right now is not very good. So we got one Democratic governor and one Republican governor, I think. So I really thought this would be the first time politicians would get together. Uh, but needless to say, they said that we couldn't do it, and so I've been asked every time I turn around, and that's all it was. We asked for a waiver. I still don't understand why we didn't get it. Uh, some rule had been put in that they weren't going to give waivers, but we already had the other two games. And, guys, if you can convince me how that was going to help North Carolina's basketball team or South Carolina's basketball team over somebody else, then I'll listen to it. But that was not the intent. We were just trying to... Uh, if when you see the scenes of people's stuff out on the street, you want to do something. And that's sadly what we saw. We saw so many situations, people losing <coughs> everything they have. And we had what I thought was one of the few good ideas I've ever had. And that was even a Roy original. It wasn't anybody else. All right. Thank you. Everybody have a good day.